Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Education Minister reports spaces available in high schools for students not comfortable with placements. St. Catherine South Police keeping close watch on Gregory Park community. And later in sports, West Indies struggling opening session on day one of first test. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. The Education Ministry is reporting that it has spaces in high schools for students who are not comfortable with their placements. Acting Chief Education Officer Dr. Kasson Troop was speaking at today's post-cabinet press briefing. Over 30,000 primary school students will be transitioning into high school for the new academic year. However, not all students who sat the primary exit profile exam got the high school of their choice. There have been concerns that some students are placed too far from where they live. For example, a student living in St. Anne passed for a school in St. Thomas. But Acting Chief Education Officer Dr. Kasson Troop says it is not a matter of space. Not an issue of lack of spaces in our secondary schools. It may mean you want a particular space, but this year we have spaces available in our secondary schools. For the most part, we have roughly 40,000 spaces when we do our um, space audit across all our secondary schools. And we have additional spaces in our private high schools. This year we only place 35,000 plus students, so we do have spaces. So it is not a situation in Jamaica at this time that we cannot place all our primary school students transition into grade 7 in a high school. Spaces are available. Dr. Troop says if a parent is concerned, they can reach out to the regional education officer in their parish. She says once procedure is followed, then there is no issue in getting a child transferred. Whenever we have a challenge with proximity, with um, family concerns like a parent would come to say all my children went to Ulmer's boys and my other son was placed at Arden can you assist us in getting this child down to Ulmer's boys because of dropping off issues, transportation issues, you know, movement of family. And our principals do work with us. Meanwhile, Dr. Troop said this year, the ministry saw very few glitches in the placement system compared to previous years. No, no parent came to say that I think my child was unfairly placed. Normally we have that. We have parents who come to say, I want to see the scripts and we have to pull the records and we have to show them where the student is ranked or outranked. We have not had that this year. Parents have been comfortable with where their students have been placed. But if it is that you have concerns, parents, please report to the regional offices. We have seven regional offices. Um, we have in Old Arbor, we have in St. Anne, Brownstown, Montego Bay, Kingston, right across this country. Meanwhile, Education Minister Favel Williams says the government has allocated $2 billion for textbooks in this year's budget. She says this will also include e-books. The point is that distribution has begun for our textbooks in the system. Um, and we're happy in terms of the ability to be ahead of the curve this year. Um, and we will continue, obviously, as we go ahead to ensure that um, we continue to streamline uh, the arrival and distribution of textbooks in the school years ahead. The St. Catherine South Police are taking steps to improve security in schools within the division. They will be training and empowering student leaders such as prefects to assist in tackling issues affecting their schoolmates. Karen Simpson reports. Similar to other schools, crime and violence and parental neglect are just some of the issues affecting students in the St. Catherine South Police Division. And so the leadership of the St. Catherine South Police Division says plans are in place to start training student leaders such as prefects to be violence interrupters within their schools. This will be done under the Safe Schools Program. Commanding Officer for the Division, Senior Superintendent of Police Christopher Phillips says the aim is to complete the training before the start of the new academic year. 
we will be um, engaging with our Dean of Discipline, Vice Principal, Principals right across the board to see how best they can improve or give them some ideas as to how they can improve security within the schools. Uh, one of the things that we have encouraged is the establishment of security committees within the schools to assist in that regard. Um, not all schools have it. Some schools have made fine progress in that. And primary schools will not be left out. SSP Phillips says these students will soon be moving on to high schools, therefore they will also be part of the initiative. Already, he said, primary school principals have indicated that they need assistance to solve issues affecting them. They are calling for more involvement of the police because, you know, we have most of our high schools on the safe school program. And so now we are going to be getting known into the primary schools because they too are experiencing um, issues within their schools. So, well, some of the same um, issues, sexual misconduct, um, you know, deviant behaviors and so on. SSP Phillips was speaking at the JCF's torch run for Special Olympians. The division received the torch from the St. Catherine North Police and have now passed it on to the St. Andrew South Police. And whilst we seek to do so for, part, for the Paralympic team, we hold it as part of our responsibility and our engagement with our community as we seek to build trust and foster a relationship with our, with our partners in, in our community. Kerry and Simpson, TVJ News. Meanwhile, the St. Catherine South Police are keeping a close watch on the Gregory Park area. This following the murder of a man in the community on Saturday. Given the kind of history with gang violence in the Gregory Park area, um, we have the intel around it and we'll be doing some, you know, operational activities inside here. But notwithstanding that murder, I must say that Gregory Park has been doing well. Um, before that, you know, it's so unfortunate that we had that incident on the weekend. And, and I would really love to appeal to the residents of Gregory Park to let us continue on that vein um, to keep the peace within the community. They have been doing well. Don't allow anyone to disrupt the peace inside them. One of St. James's most wanted criminal was shot and killed during a confrontation with the police on Tuesday. He's been identified as 26-year-old Tavon Johnson. According to reports, about 11.45 p.m., a police and military team carried out an operation on Crawford Street in search of Johnson. On arrival, the security team was fired on by Johnson. The team returned the fire and Johnson was shot and later pronounced dead. A firearm was recovered from the body. Two of the four prisoners who escaped from the Ocherias lockup in August of last year are now back in custody. 23-year-old Javar Grant of Pry was handed over to the St. Anne's Bay Police on Sunday, July 2. The second escapee, 33-year-old Jermaine Rogers, was held yesterday by the St. Catherine Police. Both men were on charge for illegal possession of a firearm. An additional charge will be laid for escape in custody. The other two men, 37-year-old Terence Harilal and 43-year-old Dennis Colburn, are still on the run. The 37... Asians, Haitians nationals who entered Jamaica by boat this week are receiving attention. That's according to Foreign Affairs Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith. Mrs. Johnson-Smith provided the update at, to, at today's post-cabinet press briefing. Ministry of National Security leads on these matters. They are uh, acknowledged at this point as illegal entrants and therefore, but they are housed in comfortable circumstances. Uh, I understand the Ministry of National Security will share that information as to the exact location uh, at the point that they see fit. Uh, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I understand, has now completed uh, their health checks, health examinations, and uh, everyone there is in good, good health. They are being fed and taken good care of and further uh, decisions and uh, announcements will be made in terms of the, uh, uh, the ultimate treatment of this body of persons in due course. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return.
Welcome back to the Midday News. Leader of the opposition People's National Party, PNP, Mark Golding, is accusing the government of trying to dismantle the Integrity Commission. At a meeting on the weekend in Morant Bay, Mr. Golding says the recent comments by Speaker of the House of Representatives and President of the Senate are clear signs of the government's plan to abort the institution. Nothing can go so. And the Auditor General, when she does her audits for years and years and years, as she sends those audits to Parliament, their table, now the Speaker and the President are saying no. They're going to hold it for two months before them table it so that the public can see what is going on in those reports. Nothing can go so. I say to Jamaica, Jamaica, beware of this government. They cannot be trusted. Mr. Golding says the government is plotting to prevent its mismanagement from being exposed. They are scheming to prevent the truth from coming out. We don't know what they have to hide yet, but we know they're hiding something by their behavior. He says under a PNP-led administration, he will ensure there is transparency. It's now time for the Business Minute. JMMB Group is launching a new portal to allow anyone to purchase securities such as stocks and bonds through the institution. JMMB's General Manager for Group Digital Services, Gifford Rankin, says the platform will first be launched in Jamaica. The company says it is also working on its Moneyline app for banking transactions. Meanwhile, JMMB says it's working to update its network of automated banking machines to accept and dispense the new bank notes. The company is also looking to deploy its own wallet for central bank digital currency, CBDC. On the international scene, Bank of America is accused of double-dipping on fees, withholding credit card rewards and opening fake accounts. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau ordered the company to pay more than $100 million to customers and $90 million in penalties. Another regulatory body also ordered Bank of America to pay $60 million in fines. Some of the allegations are reminiscent of the Wells Fargo scandal that involved millions of bank accounts being opened without customer authorization. Bank of America did not immediately respond to a request for comment. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Hal Shane Burke. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at swimmer's air. The main organisms or bacteria that we find are bacteria that are generally coming from the, 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 the intestines. And so it actually is because of fecal contamination of water. Um, so, so that is why, you know, <laughs> We always talk about um, swimming in dirty water is a lot more dangerous than swimming in clean water. But even clean water has its problems. That's the health report in primetime news at 7. And now for today's healthy living tip. Use a bathing cap, earplugs or custom fitted swim molds when swimming. Dry your ears thoroughly after swimming or showering. Use a towel to dry your ears well. And tilt your head so that each ear points downward to allow water to escape the air canal. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, the Bermuda government is warning nationals from Jamaica and the Dominican Republic that they must be in possession of a valid transit visa if they wish to enter the British Overseas Territory. In a statement, the Ministry of Economy and Labor said all visa-controlled nationals must present the relevant documents upon arrival or risk being returned on the next available commercial flight. The statement by the ministry followed complaints by a government legislator, Lawrence Scott, whose company is behind a new charter flight service linking Bermuda to the Caribbean. 
On the international scene, China-based hackers have breached email accounts at two dozen organizations, including some U.S. government agencies. U.S. officials and Microsoft have been working to assess the impact of the hack and contain the fallout. Officials say the hack was an apparent spying campaign aimed at acquiring sensitive information. China has been labeled as the most advanced U.S. adversaries in cyberspace. China has routinely denied the allegations. And heavy rainfall in southwest Japan has resulted in devastating flooding and landslides. Six people have died. Nineteen others are injured while five are still missing. Japan's Kyushu region has been experiencing heavy rainfall since the start of the month and Monday saw record-breaking levels. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Kerry and Simpson. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports support with Jordan Fort.